I'm all about trying to save you time with your admin, so here's 20 tips to help you become an admin ninja the next time you work with any of these Google apps. We're gonna start with Gmail, and my first tip is to make sure that you've got Smart Compose, Personalization, and Smart Reply switched on in your settings. So to do this, click on the cog in the top right corner, then click See All Settings, and scroll down until you get to the Smart Compose section. Make sure the writing suggestions is switched on, then go to the next section underneath the Smart Compose personalization and make sure that's switched on as well. And then the final section you need to switch on is called Smart Reply. Scroll down until you get to that and then click Smart Reply on. Remember to scroll down to the end of the page and click Save Changes once you've made your choices. So the next time you type an email, keep an eye out on what happens as you type. You'll start to notice that Google suggests your next words as you type. And because you've switched on personalization, it will suggest words in your own writing style. So as these suggestions show up, just press the tab key to accept them. Also, when you click in an email to reply, you'll see that there's a couple of suggested answers at the bottom of some emails before you actually reply to them. If you want to use any of them, just simply click on them and they'll insert into your reply. Moving on to the second tip and it's undo send. So this lets you get back an email you've just sent up to 30 seconds after you've sent it, depending on the length of time you've chosen in the settings. So to set this, click on the cog in the top right corner, then click see all settings. And near the top, there's a section called undo send. Click on the drop down arrow and choose the number of seconds you want the cancellation period to be. The maximum is 30 seconds. Once you've decided, scroll down to the bottom of the page and remember to save your changes. So the next time you send an email, we just send this one, you'll see there's a notification in the bottom left corner that says to undo. Click on there within the cancellation period that you've just set and it will cancel sending the email and reopen it as the draft. My third tip is one that I think is very underrated and that's called nudges. So this is really good if you're busy or, or inundated with emails and tend to forget to respond to them. To set your nudges, click on the cog in the top right corner, go to see all settings and scroll down to the nudges section. The first option is suggest emails to reply to. So this is if someone's asked a question in their email and you've not replied yet. After so many days, Google will nudge that email back to the top of your inbox with a gentle reminder asking if you want to reply. You can then either accept the nudge and respond, or you can click dismiss nudge. The second option is suggest emails to follow up on. So if you've sent an email to somebody and asked a question, but they haven't replied, Google will again nudge your email to the top of your inbox asking you, asking you if you want to follow up. Again, you can either respond or dismiss the nudge. Switch them both to on. And you'll see in the bottom left here is a notification telling me that my preferences have been saved automatically so there's no need to save changes. Okay, so moving on to my second set of tips, and these are for Google Calendar. Now you probably know already about the different views that you can have in your calendar and the keyboard shortcuts to access them. So for example, pressing M brings up the monthly view, W is the weekly view, D is the daily view, T is today, etc., etc. But you can also use your mouse on this small calendar here over on the left. So if you want to see specific days or dates, Simply click and drag over the days that you want to see. So you can see I've highlighted the 13th and the 14th of December, and this now shows in the main calendar view as just the 13th and 14th. I can also highlight days over two, two weeks. So for example, the 16th, Friday the 16th, to Wednesday the 21st, and you can see it's now showing Friday the 16th to Wednesday the 21st. It's showing me the six full days. How good is that? My next tip is if you don't want to see the weekends in your calendar, you can set them to hide in your settings. So to do that, press S to get into your settings, and then click on View Options on the left, and just uncheck the box next to Show Weekends. And your settings are automatically saved, so you can just click on Back here, and your calendar now shows Monday to Friday without the weekends. If we go to monthly view, you can still see Monday to Friday and weekends, weekends aren't shown. Now, did you know that you can set your Google Calendar to email you a list of all your meetings and events every day with a click of a mouse? So to set this up, go into your calendar and press S to open up your settings. Then over on the left, scroll down to the section called Settings for My Calendars and click on the calendar that you want to get notified about. Click on Other Notifications on the left here and at the bottom, there's one called Daily Agenda. 
click on the drop down arrow here and make sure that that is set to email. You'll now receive an email each morning with an agenda of all your meetings and events for that day. On to Google Tasks and my first tip is various ways of adding tasks whilst in Gmail. So one way is to simply drag and drop the email over to the task pane. And this will use the subject line of the email as the title, but doesn't actually affect the email itself. Another way is to right click on the email that you want to add and then choose add to task. And if you're already in an email, you can use keyboard shortcut shift and T and that will also add it to your task pane. Another way if you're in the email is to just simply click on the icon at the top here to add to tasks. You can also select multiple emails and then just either click and drag them over to your task pane so they're all added here. Or again, once you've selected them, you can click up, click the icon at the top here, add to tasks. Now, the great thing about adding tasks from an email is that it automatically includes a link to the actual email itself. So if you click on any of the tasks and then click on the email it will automatically open up that email so this is great if the task was set up a while ago and you can't remember what it's about my next tip is to make sure you star any tasks that take priority over others so this way you can quickly see all of your starred tasks together and move through the most important tasks first to do this click on the star that appears to the right of the task either when you're in the task itself or when you hover over it once you've starred it you can then choose to view the starred task list by clicking on the arrow to the right of the current list name and choosing starred and that's job done. The final tip in Google Tasks is to quickly set recurring tasks from the actual side panel. So to do this, click into tasks over here on the right, enter the details of any of the tasks, click on date and time, set the time, and then click on the repeat icon underneath. You can then set your recurring schedule. Once you've set this, you can see at a glance underneath the actual task itself, it will show you the, the repeating schedule there. You can access the schedule to edit or delete it by clicking back into the task and then you can click on the cross that appears to the right of the actual repeat and stop this repeating task. And job done. Moving on to my next set of tips and they're to do with Google Drive. The first one is to quickly and easily upload any files or folders by simply dragging and dropping them into the main drive. You'll see that the screen changes as you add them. Now, a word of warning though, make sure you drag them over files in your main drive rather than folders, otherwise they'll be uploaded directly into the folder. Moving on to my second tip. Now, whenever you want to create a new document in Google Drive, it doesn't matter if it's sheets, docs, slides, or forms. When you click on new and go down to select whichever type you want to create, instead of clicking directly onto it, hover over the small arrow to the right and choose from a template. Now there's a number of templates available to use for free and this is great if you're creating something from scratch and you don't know where to start. By choosing a template, you'll have the basics already done and it's just a matter of customizing it to match your branding and style. My final tip for Google Drive is to star any files or folders that you're currently working on so it's easier to find them. To do this from the main drive page, simply right click on the file that you want to star and choose add to start. If you're already in a file that you want to star, you can click on the star icon at the top of the screen to the right of the file name. And then to find any of your starred files, when you're back in the main drive, drive page, just click on the folder called starred over on the left here and it will list all of your starred files and folders. I'm moving on to my next set of tips and these are for Google Docs. Now this first one will save you heaps of time and it's called text substitution. So this substitutes words from a list with other words. For example, when you type in the letter C in brackets, it automatically changes to the copyright symbol. And this is because it's included in the text substitution list. So to access this, click on tools in the menu, go down to preferences, then go to substitutions tab, and you'll see a list of substitutions that Google has applied. So you can see here, this is the C in brackets and it's telling you to replace it with the copyright symbol. To add any abbreviation you like, simply type it in the replace box here and add in the correct wording into the with box here. You can also use this to add in any words that you know you always spell incorrectly. Simply add it in here and it will automatically change the next time you spell it wrong. So for example, if you usually spell the word calendar with an ER at the end, we can put it in the replace box and we want to replace it with the correct spelling, which is not that, <laughs> which is with an AR at the end. Now, before you click OK, make sure the automatic substitutions box here is checked and then you can click OK. And the next time you spell calendar incorrectly, it will automatically change to the correct spelling. If you want to remove any of them, simply go back into tools, 
go to preferences, go to the substitutions tab, and then scroll down and find the word that you want to remove. And you can just click on the cross on the right hand side here and then click OK. Anything that you add into the text substitutions will carry across to all of your Google Docs and your Google Slides. Moving on to my next tip, and that is creating drop-down lists. You're not gonna believe how easy it is to insert a drop-down list into your Google Doc. Simply type the at symbol to access the Smart Chips menu and click on drop-down. You can then choose from the available preset ones, which are project status and review status. So if I choose project status, and then just choose one that you would want. We'll do some more. And review status. You can also create your own. So again, click the at symbol to access the smart chips. Click on drop down and then click on new drop down and you give it a name. So for argument's sake, I'm just gonna call this YN. Put in the options that you want to add. So let's just keep it simple, yes and no. Choose the color that you want to use for each one. And then you can remove any of the options that you don't want available. And then just click save. And this is your dropdown that you've just created. How easy is that? Job done. My final tip in Google Docs is using the explore button. So you'll find this in the bottom right corner of the screen here and you can use it to simply type in what you want to find out more about. For example, if I'm writing about where I currently live in Ireland, which is County Leash, I can simply type in here, County Leash, press return, and it will give me web results, it will give me images, and it will also list any docs in my Google Drive that are relevant to my search. If you hover over any of the web results, you'll see quotation marks in the top right corner here. If you click on any of those, and it will add a citation in the footnote at the bottom of the page. If you go to images and hover over any of the images, you'll see a plus symbol in the top right corner. Click on there to add the image to your document. And then when you click into the image itself, it gives the details and a link to the source of the image. As always though, remember to check the license before using any images or information off the web. And then to close the explore tab down, just click on the cross in the top right corner. Now I couldn't do Google Sheets tips without including this first one as it is my absolute favorite. And that's how to freeze rows and, and columns really, really quickly. In the top left corner of your sheet, you'll see a couple of thick gray lines here. And when you hover over them, your mouse will turn into a hand. Simply drag the line down to the row that you want to freeze and voila. And also the thick line here on the right of this cell, you can click and drag over to the right to the columns that you want to freeze. And then when you scroll over to the right, you can see those columns are frozen. To unfreeze them, you just literally click and drag them back to the beginning. Job done. How easy is that? My next tip is another real quick tip and it's for when you want to add in checkboxes. Simply highlight where you want the checkboxes to go, go to insert on the menu and click on checkbox and there they are. Again, how easy is that? And my final tip for this set is to use alternating colors for the, for the rows of data. Click anywhere within the range, go to the format on the menu here, go down to alternating colors and this opens up a pane over on the right hand side where you can choose the range that it applies to. You can choose whether or not it has a header and a footer. And you can also choose the colors that you want to use from the, from the list here of the preset colors. If you want to use your own colors, then you can click next to each one of these here, click on the color, go to custom and put in the hex code of the color that you want to use. Once you're happy with everything, just click on done and you now have alternating colors on your data set. To remove the colors, simply click anywhere within the range, go to format, go down to alternating colors and at the bottom, click on remove alternating colors and job done. Now my final two tips are a couple of ones that I use all the time that I thought you might also like. The first one is to quickly start new files in docs, sheets, slides or forms by using a shortcut URL instead of going through your usual Google Drive and clicking new, etc. You just need to make sure that you're logged into your Google account first, then go to your browser and simply type in one of the following. To create a new Google Doc, type doc.new and press return. To create a new Google Sheet in your web browser, type in sheet.new, press return and this will give you a new blank Google Sheet. To start a new Google Slides, type in slide.new, press return, 
and again it gives you a brand new Google set of Google Slides and to do a new form type in form.new press return and it gives you a new blank Google form. Job done. My final tip in this video is to make use of the side panel that's always visible when using Gmail, Calendar, Drive, Docs, Sheets or Slides. The side panel here allows you to use apps side by side in one window. So here you can access Calendar, Keep, Tasks, Contacts and Maps and all you need to do is click on the relevant icon in the side panel here. Now if you don't see your side panel there's a small arrow in the bottom right corner of the screen click on there to show the side panel. So a couple of examples of how to make use of the side panel. As I showed before, you can click and drag any email in from Gmail into your tasks. This is what I showed you at the very start of this video. You can also drag a keep note from the side panel into your actual active Google Doc. That's just a couple of examples for you. And you've also got the option of installing add-ons to work with your Google product, which could help you be even more productive. Now, if you want to go more in depth on any of the tips that I've shown in this video, take a look at my playlists for each of the Google apps. I've linked two of them here to start you off. As always, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.